All right, so plan orange is going to go right down to the wire going into the last turn of 1933. The U.S. had landed troops in northern Luzon, but the Japanese had a really powerful hand. They had all three surprise cards in their hand. And while they were not able to inflict the kind of losses on the American fleet necessary to have a force ratio automatic victory, they were able to get forces, uh, reinforcements into Luzon and uh, defeat the American 24th Division and reoccupy the critical air bases there, thus making the, the Americans' obvious attempt to uh, win the game by getting all three key bases in the Philippines conquered by the end of the game. So as it stands now, all Japan has to do is survive five more cards and they will win the game. But the Americans do have a favorable force ratio still in terms of Navy strength. They have a very powerful force in Samar and Leyte. And so this thing is, uh, this is going to go right down to the wire. Uh, prior to this turn, it looked like the U.S. was going to win. The, the Japanese drew a very powerful hand. They made good use of it. And so now it's going to come down to what cards show up and can the Allies, uh, or the United States rather, make a good use of those cards to uh, turn uh, this stalemated situation in the Philippines back to their advantage. There's also avenues of victory. In order to, to get troops here, the Japanese had to weaken their forces in Korea, so it's possible to uh, get a blockade victory still. So other options do remain open to the Americans, and a force ratio victory could develop if there's a desperate uh, naval battle. One more big naval battle could decide the whole matter. So that is Force Orange, and, or uh, Plan Orange, and it's right down to the wire. All right, well, we've had a very, very exciting finish here. It literally comes down to the last two operations. The uh, the card draw for the Americans was not good, but they did have response cards that allowed them to get an extra draw. And because um, the Japanese did, didn't have to make some moves that were going to trigger those, uh, the Americans were fortunately able to draw two key events that allowed them uh, to take a stab at Manila. The first one, uh, first operation was an utter failure, sending a very large task force and a couple divisions trying to land on uh, northern Luzon and then hopefully then march in and do a, a land attack on Manila. I was hoped, hopeful that that was going to work, and that was because I only had one card that would allow that level of an offensive against Manila. And uh, unfortunately for the Americans, the Japanese were holding a very, very crucial uh, response card, which allowed them to bring the better part of their fleet into a big, decisive battle. Unfortunately, once more for the Japanese, they rolled too low to really make the full use of it. So even though they outnumbered the Americans in terms of strength points, they only scored a half result, whereas the Americans scored a full, scored a full resort, result and ultimately inflicted more damage on the Japanese than they took themselves. But the Japanese ended up uh, turning back the amphibious landing, so the landing on northern Luzon did not happen. The Japanese then made another move to um, uh, kind of reorganize a few things elsewhere. The Americans were able to respond with a response card. That triggered uh, one more card draw for them, and that uh, gave them one more offensive opportunity. So they threw everything in the kitchen, but the kitchen sink at Manila with one pinning attack against uh, the uh, airfields in northern Luzon, and this time the Japanese did not have a response card to send enough fleet units in to contest the landing. They had to rely on the army units, and the army units unfortunately rolled a very low result, and the Americans were able to wipe them out with full result and uh, took Manila. With Manila now in the uh, American hands, the next... Uh, the move for the Japan Japanese, they had two cards left, and uh, one of them was uh, going to allow them to activate uh, five units, and so they had one carrier left. Without a carrier, it would have been checkmate, but they had one carrier left that enabled them to neutralize the uh, uh, Airzoc there at uh, Mindanao and land at Davao. And so they sent in their, uh, their biggest unit that would, had landed on northern Luzon earlier. It was full strength. The Americans failed to intercept. And so uh, they got a surprise attack, but rolled terrible on the surprise attack and were not able to kill off all of the air units 
Actually, they should have only been able to inflict losses on one of them because they don't have enough air units there anyways. Oh wait, no, they're they're in the hex, that's right. I set them to the side, that's right. All right, so they would have, if they'd gotten a full result, they would have killed all those air units, but they didn't. And uh, that turned out to be the difference in the battle because as it were it was, the Japanese were able to inflict one step loss, but not the critical second one. They just didn't have enough activations to get another ground unit into the fight. And uh, the Americans rolled a full result, which flipped, um, actually uh, they rolled a, a 2x result, which flipped this guy. Had they not done that, that would have been enough uh, for this the invasion to have succeeded and uh, displaced everybody. But it failed, and that's the ball game. The American 1st Marine Regiment holds on to Mindanao by its fingernails. And in a real nail biter at the end, uh, the Americans are able to eke out a victory. In terms of the overall naval situation, I was using markers on this track to, to uh, uh, mark uh, the strength of units and so forth and how many steps of battleships. The, the naval ratio was still pretty high in Americans' fa favor after that last big naval battle. And so the Japanese had to be very careful about risking their battleships in one more throw of the dice. So that is, uh, that's the final result. Plan Orange was a success, barely. And uh, the Japanese were defeated in, uh, late in 1933 in the First Great Pacific War.